Mike Semper Vivi here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in iHeart American Forces Radio, Cable Radio Network 2, sportsbyline.com, over-the-air affiliates. Maybe you're listening via podcast or you're video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining us today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. Is it sunny where the boss man is at? I don't know because I don't know where he is. But I'm going to guess that he's going to be back for subscribers this weekend on WrestlingObserver.com with Dave Meltzer doing Wrestling Observer Radio. They are going to be reviewing what myself and Filthy Tom Lawler are going to be previewing today, and that is Crown Jewel from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia coming up tomorrow, Saturday, on Peacock and the WWE Network. We'll run down the card and get uh, give our predictions on who we think is going to win and come out of there with those two big shiny new belts that they have to give to the champion of champions in Saudi Arabia. But before we get there, we also have SmackDown tonight, which is a taped show. I'll run down the card without spoilers a little bit later on. Also this weekend, AEW Rampage, as well as a live collision taking place from Philadelphia on Saturday. Got the ratings for this past Wednesday's Dynamite show as well. Ring of Honor may have found a TV spot to land in, and I don't think it's going to be any surprise when I tell you who Dave Meltzer believes uh, where it's going to be. And then we have a couple of curious stories. One is a pretty cool story about a George Hackenschmidt match being found in Australia, which is really cool, and Tom's going to tell you about that when we get back from break. And then the story about an Alexa Bliss impersonator who the New York Times says scammed nearly a million dollars out of a gentleman named Alfred Mancinelli in New York who became very smitten with this scammer. I'll tell you about that when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. The show, Mike the Semper, the Vivi, and Filthy Tom Waller with here with you. We do this show for an hour at a time every single day, but if you want to try to find us 24-7, if you haven't been blocked yet, you can do so on Twitter slash X. I am at Semper VV. Tom is at Filthy Tom Lawler. The website is at WONF4W, and the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley is here with you on Saturdays, beginning at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, and Andrew Zarian joins you at 6 p.m. on Sundays. Obviously, I'd love it if you made the wrestling news part of your day as well. You can find it wherever you find your favorite podcasts, or head on over to the WrestlingNews.com or at Wrestling News AB on X or Facebook. Every single day of the year, everything you need to know to get your day started, get you up to date, or get you to your favorite long-form review podcast like Wrestling Observer Radio. I assume Brian will be joining Dave for that show after Crown Jewel coming up this weekend. A little bit later on, we will run down the card and give you our predictions for what we believe is going to happen. But without any other further ado, I bring in Filthy Tom Lawler. Tom, how was your Halloween? Largely uneventful, which I'm very happy for. Did you take the kids out trick-or-treating? I took my son out. My daughter made plans without us, went out with one of her friends. But uh, took my son out, had a good time. You know, I don't know what else there is to say. I guess the more pedestrian, the lamer these days, the better. So, Now, what did you, what did he dress up as? He Please a, say it was you dressed up as Dan Severn. <laughs> he he could care less about my fighting or wrestling career. Uh, he was one of the cameramen from Skibbity Toilet. Where? Yes, exactly. Is that a, a kid's? <laughs> I guess that's a kid show. Uh, I am not quite sure about that, but it's on YouTube. Fair enough. What's not on YouTube is AEW Dynamite, and because people love ratings, I'll get those out of the way right now. Dynamite on TBS Wednesday night, 628,000 viewers, according to WrestleNomics, down slightly from last week's 637,000. The rating in the 18 to 49 year old demographic was a 0.19, consistent with the week before. So 
there you go. It was like a flat line when you look at the quarter hour ratings uh, throughout the show. Killed by the World Series. Did what it was going to do. The fans that it did get in, much like NXT, they held them for the entire time. So there you go. That was what happened uh, with Dynamite on Mike, Wednesday. Yes. Mike, I can let you know that there's one viewer that they have lost, at least really? for the next few months, and that is me. Because every single month, every single streaming service decides that they are going to do a price hike. And I finally had enough of it. I finally said, enough's enough. And I got rid of it. Hulu is gone. No more live TV for me. So until they pop up on Max, there's one less viewer on that. In that 640000 How much were you paying for? Are, are you just like doing 30-day trials for things and then like canceling it and signing up under another Google address or something? Well, the Hulu, no, I've had Hulu Live and Disney and ESPN Plus bundle for years, I guess now. And it went up from mid-60s, I believe, to $90 over the past couple of years. And with the other streaming services that I have, Paramount, Peacock. Oh, you're the guy with Netflix. Paramount. Oh, I have Paramount Plus, yeah. Huh. Uh, all, and all of those streaming services, I just said, you know what? I've had enough. And Hulu, you got to go. So until I am waiting, I'm patiently waiting. I'm anticipating the day that they move over to Max. And I think a lot of, a lot of people are going to watch once it does. How are you going to survive without ESPN Plus when it comes to fights? I have ESPN Plus. Oh, so you're keeping so you just you got rid of the the other bundle and you're keeping ESPN Plus. Correct. And then next year ESPN itself is supposed to be a la carte, which will be a big help. You got to jump on this YouTube TV bandwagon. I love that thing. I think whatever it is I'm paying right now with a couple of extra add-ons, it's like eighty three ninety eight a month or something like yeah. that, which is... <laughs> but then again, I also don't have the 9 million other streaming services. Like, what are you watching on Paramount Plus? Like, Bar Rescue's on all the time on Spike anyway. Like, what are you watching? Or Paramount, whatever the channel's called now. Well, I mean, you know, I have other members of my family. What are they watching? So, on Paramount Sp Plus? SpongeBob. Oh, uh, well, yeah. I guess they're Nickelodeon and all that sort of stuff. But let's see. I don't know where to transition, how to transition away from that. So I'm just going to pull it way away from that and take it to a completely, I don't want to say ridiculous story. It really is a sad story when you think about it. The story of Alfred Mancinelli, <sighs> the man that was scammed out of nearly $1 million by a con artist impersonating Alexa Bliss. The story is up on the front page of the website. It says that Mancinelli became completely smitten with an imposter after being targeted online and was convinced he was in a romantic relationship with Bliss, the New York Times wrote. He drained his retirement savings and his granddaughter's college fund before passing away at 79 years old. His chat, message, his chat messages with the sham Alexa read like a soap opera, the New York Times wrote. There were battles with his son, whom he disowned after his son tried to safeguard his money. Other evil meddlers trying to spoil their relationship and ongoing references to Vince McMahon, the former wrestling promoter, whom the fake Alexa accused of humiliating her after she refused his advances. But Alfred was always there, ready to extend emotional and financial support. The Alexa impersonator often claimed to be hospitalized for bad menstrual periods and would plead with Alfred to send money so the hospital could begin treating her. Tell me how much do you have left, baby, the imposter said in a chat. Mancinelli and the imposter never spoke by audio or video, but the imposter sent him trinkets in the mail and once sent him pizza for his birthday. Mancinelli's son tried to step in and protect what was left of his father's money, but Mancinelli was loyal to the fake Bliss. Bliss has repeatedly warned fans about scammers impersonating her. Other WWE stars, including Liv Morgan, have also warned fans about similar scam operations. 
The story also reads that Mancinelli also sent money to two other scammers not impersonating Bliss who claim to have sick children or be caring for sick children. About $900,000 was drained from this man uh, by these folks. And you see it and you hear about it. And I'm always amazed, you know, that it happens, you know, for years. It used to be fax schemes and phone calls uh about somebody you know saying they were kidnapped or a what is it the the prince in, in nigerian in prince nigeria yeah scam artist you know apparently who got joe pedicino and, and gl the global wrestling federation there was something like that he thought he had a bunch of money from some nigerian prince or something like that and then sunk a bunch of money in and then found out you know there there was no nigerian prince the dude had absolutely no money whatsoever but are, are you, you know, talking about soft ground wrestling no not because <laughs> what's going on with that? <laughs> that that would be uganda and i i don't know i haven't heard much from them recently but you know tom again this is just kind of really just a sad story about a an old man getting preyed on and and really fallen really fallen victim to it yeah you know as a a sign of caution, I, I'm pretty sure, almost positive, almost 100%, I could tell you that if you never meet the person or speak to them on the phone, you are not in a relationship with them. Do not be sending that person money. You know who you should be sending your money to? Oh. Wrestlers who are hurt. You know? If we could have gotten, maybe if we could have gotten this guy... You know, could have helped out some people. If you're out there and you're looking for a good cause, Chris Bay, still recovering, TNA superstar. So if you got $900,000, shoot some of it his way. And if you got an extra five or ten, patreon.com slash midatlantic podcast. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. So Mike Semper, VV, and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. No, Alfred Mancinelli was not Jim in Virginia. For those of you out there, stop it, stop it. That would be mean. Don't don't say that. You know what's a great follow on Twitter? At Filthy Tom Lawler. He's not going to tell you that. I will tell you that. Always putting up interesting things, moments from his career, all the great moments you can relive on Filthy Tom's Twitter. But also, there's educational things as well. And Filthy, you have discovered. What somebody else had discovered in Australia, which was a match from 1908 featuring one of the most famous professional wrestlers, really of all time, and certainly one of the three or four from uh, before 1940, George Hackenschmidt. Yes, George Hackenschmidt, the Russian lion born in Estonia, one of the most famous wrestlers worldwide of all time. And just recently, um, th this footage was released. Uh, I saw it first posted today by Lee Cassabolt on Twitter. And Phil Lyons, the great historian, had been talking about it previously. And this is footage. You mentioned, you said Australia earlier, but I believe this footage is actually from New Zealand. Ah. Uh, and this footage is from 1908. George Hackenschmidt taking on the American champion who weighed in at 21 stone. So a big guy, the American champion, Joe Rogers. This match uh, took place in 1908, January 30th. It was produced by the United Kingdom's Charles Urban Trading Company. And then this film was shown on a uh, 2010 I believe, a, I'm sorry, a 1910 tour of New Zealand by George Hackenschmidt, along with some other wrestlers. Uh, and now it has been unearthed by the, I'm going to butcher this one, but Nga Tonga Sound and Vision Archive out of New Zealand. So it's just awesome. Awesome. After all this time 116 years later to see george hackenschmidt in action something that i'm sure many people never thought we'd get to see and while if you watch amateur wrestling like i do i was actually watching the uww world championships yesterday uh 
this this wrestling would look somewhat rudimentary, but it is amazing to see George Hackenschmidt out there shooting a double leg. He's hand fighting like you see in wrestling today. He's running half Nelsons, tilting his much larger opponent. And we had heard stories about this guy's strength for years and years and years. And you could see it. It's quite apparent here because he is the smaller man up against the 21 stone Joe Rogers. But he is still able to manhandle him and get the victory. So just, I mean, tremendous to see this after such a long time. And it gives me, it gives me hope that there's other footage out there, that there's more that we can recover. I just started reading Carl Stern's book yesterday about the pioneers of pro wrestling and what a better time to have footage like this unearthed. Yeah, his books are awesome, and his research is incredible. Uh, Carl Stern, who is a member of our website, and if you join up, F4WOnline.com, WrestlingObserver.com, you sign up fourteen ninety nine. You get access to everything, including all of the archives of that show. And and once he still puts out when it was cool dot com is his website. He does incredible, important research on covering things. There are a lot of people out there that are doing this and trying to do this. Richard Land is another one who is out there finding umatic tapes and tapes from all over the the world and trying to buy those. Uh, John Boucher is another guy. Uh, he actually unearthed a bunch of Luthez run UWA footage from the 70s that he has put out on YouTube. I mean, it's incredible. And Australia, New Zealand, Southeast Asia, you know, they've discovered a lot of movies and newsreels and fights and wrestling matches. Are They're being discovered there because apparently, and it only makes sense, Things that would be filmed here in the States or filmed in the UK, they had to travel, all those reels had to travel around the world. And often, Australia, New Zealand, those were the last places getting any of those reels. I mean, and so they've been sitting there in some cases. And Alfred Hitchcock had a movie from 1924 that people thought was gone that ended up being found in Australia. So there is still hope that we're going to be able to Ugh. find a lot more of this stuff, especially from the turn of the century. I, I Right now, I tell you, Mike, I have goosebumps thinking about what's out there. There's years and years and years of unearthed mixed martial arts footage from Brazil that we think has yeah. been lost to time just the amount of stuff that's out there. I mean, there's footage of, we have footage of Antonio Noki wrestling in Pakistan. So you've got to think there's more footage from those areas as well that we haven't uncovered. Um, it's just, uh, it's so awesome to be living in this time. And uh, I hope more of this comes out, obviously, because I, I'm just like, I'm enamored with it, to be honest. Hackenschmidt was such a badass. And again, 21 stone is like two biscuits short of 300 pounds. So this guy that he was facing and he looked like, man, just why, when you, in fact, go to Filthy's Twitter at Filthy Tom Lawler. The link is there so you can see the entire, what is it, about 23, 25 minutes of, of footage? It's about, I, yeah, it's about about that long but uh some of it's george hackenschmidt some of it is another match actually in between so there's one fall of george hackenschmidt and then there's another match and then there's the second fall of that match and you get a little bit of posing from joe rogers and the old russian lion in there as well hitting but, the double lat spread and all that stuff yeah. you know it just and again it's just amazing and then january 30th 2000 or uh, 2000 january 30th 1908 is when that hack and schmidt rogers match is from just unbelievable it really is one place uh that you can find all of the ring of honor footage at least most of it i think i don't know i'm not a member is honor club and some of you are saying well i, I don't want to pay for honor club i'm like filthy i'm tired of all these stupid streaming services well guess what if you've been wanting to watch ring of honor your dream may be coming true on True TV. In this week's Wrestling Observer newsletter released today, Dave Meltzer wrote, quote, True, True TV, this is just one of those days today. I feel like I got a cough constantly. True TV has always been the station rumored because they are transitioning into being a sports channel in prime time and thus would need new content. 
end quote. No other details were reported. The current weekly Thursday ROH TV product lives on Khan's Honor Club subscription service, which also includes their quarterly premium live events. Tony Khan has never said how much he has paid for Ring of Honor. He did tell Dave that he paid less for the company than Jim Crockett Jr. did for Bill Watts' Universal Wrestling Federation in 1987, which he dramatically overpaid for at $4.2 million. Khan has also said in the past that he has made the money back on ROH and then some, hopefully for his sake. Uh, this is not just part of the Max deal, and he's going to get some separate money that he can announce for Ring of Honor. Being on True TV, which is becoming TNT Sports at night, I guess with the same sort of concept that like it's Cartoon Network during the day, and then it's Adult Swim at night, I have no idea, none, why they're just not turning True TV into TNT Sports all the time. But, Filthy, you got to be happy about that if, if you've been trying to watch Athena matches. Hey, I'm not going to knock having more wrestling on TV. What I think that they need to do is carve out their own niche. And I'm not the only one that thinks this. You know, this is a sentiment that I see in a lot of places. ROH needs to be something more than just AEW light or, you know, AEW in the dark or whatever you want to call it you know it needs to have its own identity I think it needs to run its own shows with its own look uh you know maybe something along the lines of NXT where they have a center that they can go to every week or you know as we've talked about smaller smaller venues and kind of have like a nightclub or music production show kind of vibe but I think it needs to do something to set itself apart um, but I don't know. We might just get, you know, more content being thrown out there. And what do you think, Mike? Would you, I, I, I'm to me, I would utilize Daly's place more when you can and then run smaller venues. Kind of like what I think NXT should do as well, too, to mix it up every now and then have the performance center, build a place in Vegas, kind of go two weeks one two weeks at another so you can mix it up a little bit and then every once in a while throw in a 2300 arena a hammer hammerstein ballroom i'm you know i'm saying a smaller venue like that wrestling wise don't run that one because it's really expensive anything in new york is going to be really expensive but there are tons of other places where i think they could go and they like you said set it apart a little bit and what that would also do not it's going to make the atmosphere better because you're going to be in a smaller place and it's going to be lit differently and you can do different things with it but also look at how unfortunately where they are when it comes to attendance and the fact that not only is the attendance bad people get burned out watching so much wrestling so to me it would actually help AEW Rampage or Collision tapings wherever they decide to do ROH on if it was its own separate thing and had its own separate little loop going. We'll get into a little bit more about that as well as getting into Crown Jewel when we get back. Wrestling Observer Live. Show Mike Semper Reeve and Filthy Tom Lawler here with you. It's a fun and filthy Friday. It's going to be a fun Saturday too because Jim Valley is back 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific like a new man and i'm sure he's going to get into a little bit of that story with you you can listen to it if you're driving around or however you listen to wrestling observer live and also if you happen to be on youtube go to jim valley's youtube site he streams everything there he'll talk with you in between segments so definitely check that out and again andrew zarian coming up 6 p.m on sunday and remember 2 a.m on sunday you're gonna be out at the bar you're gonna be drinking and you're going to get an extra hour because you fall back to one o'clock in the morning and you get an extra hour in there. So uh, I'm going to use that for sleep because I'm old and I, I cherish this time. I've been looking for it since spring. Thank you for my hour back. Let's never do this again. But that's that. Also, as as we were talking about earlier on with, with Carl Stern, who does great work for our website, always has. An incredibly interesting man, too. Just a very interesting human being. His 700-page monster research project. 
uh, in the pioneer era of professional wrestling in the United States, the Dragon King Carl Pioneer Era Pro Wrestling Omnibus, the Bible of the Pioneer Era of Pro Wrestling. It is available in print form or on Kindle on Amazon. So definitely check that out. You can go to WrestlingObserver.com, get the information uh, on that that you need to, to find and again he's done he's written a couple of books now and as somebody who reads i still love this sort of stuff i absolutely love books being written about wrestling books being written about fighting and, and filthy i just want to bring this up because we're just yesterday was the anniversary of vanderlei silva knocking out oh, rampage oh, jackson man. in i watched it three i so watched it I. last night i watched it last night i I felt I felt so bad in the moment. I was a huge Rampage Jackson fan in the moment watching it, and even to this day, I still just oof. It was brutal. That knee was brutal. Everything that he took in that fight got tore up. Rampage Jackson did, but was, was that more or less brutal than the auto driving incident he had? Well, that's a that's a little bit of a different story. But you know, you, when you take soccer kicks to the head, you know, repeatedly over and over again. Eh, what happens later on in life, it, it, it could be a little bit dicey for you, as unfortunately we found out. But Jonathan Snowden's got a book coming out. I actually just found over here on the wall. There's a Total Elimination 2004 poster that I, that I have up over there. But uh, Jonathan Snowden doing a book on Pride Fighting Championships. I cannot wait until that thing comes out. Look at that. I've got a Pride poster on my wall right there i've got the pride championship belt was actually behind me but the my video quality is not good enough really for you to see it uh if there's ever been a mark in their life for pride fighting championships i am him just the best promotion uh pro wrestling at its finest i can't wait to read that book and you know i guess we're going to take a little step back towards pride rules in a way because tomorrow there's a ufc fight night in edmonton and this will be the first time under the new unified rules which allow the ever so dangerous brick breaking cement shattering brain busting 12 to 6 elbow and also a new grounded knee rule in which you must have your knee or elbow on the floor to take away knees to the head so no more playing the game of putting your hand down so a little bit more violence on the way at the ufc tomorrow maybe well the 12 to 6 elbow thing like again, that was one of those things where i understood initially why they didn't want to let them in because visually it looks bad if you are one of those people who doesn't watch fighting all the time or if you abhor fighting when you see those 12 to 6 elbows they look a lot more violent but the reality is swiping elbows one do just as much damage and two open up cuts pretty much at the same clip that a 12 to 6 can i'll i will post later because i was actually watching a fight from the japan martial arts expo yesterday and there was a fight a fighter daichi abe which got cut with one of the most horrific cuts I've seen from a elbow going across. So I'll post that on my Twitter at some point today because a horrific, one of the all time horrific cuts that I've seen, I would be more worried about my opponent going six to 12 than I would 12 to six. Do you have any problem going six to 12, Tom? If I did, I'd just listen to the ads for this very show and I'd take care of that problem. The show was supposed to be Derek Lewis against Alexander Romanoff. Uh, Derek Lewis is still fighting on the show. Uh, I can't even remember who he's going to be facing, but uh, unfortunately the Romanoff fight did not end up... Uh, I forget even what happened. Why is that fight not taking place? I don't know. I can't even remember, but Derek Lewis is on there still fighting somebody, except he's not in the main event anymore. Uh, Rose Namajunas is on this show as well, too, against Aaron Blanchfield, who I, I don't know much about in the flyweight division. That is the co-main event, but it's a Rose fight, so I'm, I'm there to watch that at least. Derek Lewis is taking on the undefeated Jonata Denise. Jonata Denise? Correct, yeah. Is he good with his knees? Any idea on this man? Who should I bet on? I, you know, 
I need a hit. Eight, eight and zero. Oh? I'd take Denise. Why not? Right. Fair enough. Although it, <laughs> I hope Lewis wins, just because if that's the case, we are going to have a Derek Lewis promo afterwards, and they're always good. Brandon Moreno is in the main event. Flyway fight against Amir Albazi. Uh, any prediction on that one? I'll take uh, Moreno. So there you go. Hey, I don't know if Ryan Frederick or uh, possibly Paul Fontaine may be joining Dave and Brian tomorrow. It is a fight night, so maybe not. But uh, it's possible they could be joining the show as well, too. So find that out, Wrestling Observer Radio. In fact, a little bit later on today, I would assume Dave and Garrett Gonzalez will be doing a show, and maybe they can let you know on that show what's going to be going on. One thing that you can bet on if you're insane, Crown Jewel taking place in Saudi Arabia, 5 p.m. in the U.K., 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific. Tom... What is the main event on this show? Because you have, obviously, the men's crown jewel title match. I wouldn't think the women's crown jewel title match would be the main event in Saudi Arabia, so I'll leave that one out. But you do also have the big six-man tag team match between the Bloodline and Roman Reigns in the Usos. So what do you think the main event of the show is going to be? I think the main event is Cody and Gunther. I believe there'll be some sort of angle or something set up in the six-man that will lead to the finish of that match. My prediction is that Gunther wins this match. I see no reason that Cody needs to. I don't know that it really benefits him. And actually, if you look at things as far as storylines go, the bloodline and uh, you know Roman Reigns and all these guys have been built around screwing people out of championships. Kevin Are we going to see them do that with Kevin Owens and Randy Orton? Well, Kevin Owens in play? is going to be there, and that's the big thing to me when it comes to that Cody Gunther match is you have a way for Cody to lose, and Cody, I don't believe, is going to be involved in anything going forward right now as we lead into SummerSlam or SummerSlam Survivor Series when it comes to the bloodline and Roman Reigns and all them, because I think Sami Zayn is going to be involved in that, and I think Sami Zayn is going to play a part in what happens in that six-man tag team match. But with Kevin Owens, to me, you have him screw over Cody, and then that gives you... Again, the other big match for Survivor Series, besides the two War Games matches that are going to be taking place, you can have a title match between those two. So you you think it's going to be the uh, just the men's War Games match between the Bloodlines? Do you see them? In the past, we've had uh, women's War Games matches I, as I well. think we're Survivor absolutely going right? to have a women's War Game match. I think absolutely, just because if they're doing one, they're going to do another one, regardless of whether they need to do two or not on a show. That's the way this is going to go. I mean, it's kind of like the Crown Jewel women's title match, which is going to be taking place. I mean, yeah, I'm sure if the Kingdom said you're getting the Gunther-Cody title match, that they probably wouldn't have cared about anything else. But, you know, just because of... They want, it, they want things to be equal. We're going to get Nia and Liv Morgan for the women's crown jewel ma uh, as well. So I don't know what you're going to do when it comes to the women as far as putting them in a war games because, honestly, there's no feud hot enough. And with Rhea there's Ripley nothing. hurt, it, you know, to me, it would just – and, again, it would just be superfluous at this point to do something like that. But I, I, I just – I think that they still will. Well, I mean, you could, you could go down and – pick from nxt they have more storylines going on with their woman right now it seems than uh the main roster does i mean what were you what could you have right like chelsea and piper in there teaming with somebody team with naya and tiffany stratton you know it just seems also convoluted and like you said there's no real factions asuka's hurt uh, so that kind of takes damage control out of it. And yeah, I don't know. I don't see a path to a woman's war games match, but maybe we'll get one anyways. Nia Jackson, Liv Morgan. Interesting in that you got two heels going at each other. A lot of talk about Tiffany Stratton going over to raw. I think that is going to pick up a lot. Uh, apparently she did an interview a couple days ago in the last couple of days talking about 
if the fans turn me baby face, you know, I, I think I'll, I would still be the same kind of character. And I guess all that just leads me to believe at some point, especially with this re-injury, that we could see Tiffany Stratton go over to Raw and be the person possibly if Rhea's going to be out for a while that, that cashes in on Liv Morgan. Doesn't mean you still can't do Liv Morgan and, and Rhea when she gets back, but you could absolutely do that. I don't know. I don't know who's going to win this match. I wouldn't put money on it, but I'm going to flip the coin and, okay, I'll say Liv Morgan wins. Oh, I would put money on this. I would put money on Nia Jax. Why are you so to confident? Win this match. It's Nia Jax rules, baby. Yeah, but we got Raquel Rodriguez out there. Come on. You're not scared of her? Me? Yeah. No. And neither's Nia Jax. You're what, queen? Tiffany Stratton? You don't scared? think Tiffany Stratton's going to be out there to nullify her? In Probably. sort of, <laughs> in some way. <laughs> At some or, point. you know, what about old Candice LeRae? Candice well, LeRae see, and Indy Hartwell have been hanging around with Nia now, too. So maybe they're, you know, they can To me, get that's the other thing that leads me to believe that Tiffany Stratton is going to be off of there and over on Raw is the fact that she's buddying up right now to Candice or, LeRae and to Indy. And frankly, I still think Johnny Gargano and Ciampa are going to split and that Gargano is going to end up being a heel. Well, last week on commentary, they were referring to Ciampa as previously being the black heart, and then it seemed as if he was upset with Gargano. But you may have just mentioned a women's war games team right there. You know, I maybe guess so. it's maybe it's Nia, Tiffany, Candice, Indy, and then Bailey, Naomi, Brian Alvarez. I don't know who you have on the other side. <laughs> As dressed like he was yesterday. To me, you better put damage control in there just so you can have EO Sky take the uh, uh, take some of that match. We'll very, very quickly run down the rest of the show when we get back from break. Wrestling Observer Live. What side gun, Julia Lang. Apparently, what side gun is running the Heels Have Eyes Three event this weekend in Chicago. Uh, filthy, you're not booked. I didn't even know that there were two other shows that have already happened. But I can say this, with a name like Semper Vivi, I'm still pissed off that West Side Gun has not rhymed me in a song. Because I think it would work, especially with the way he says words. Like, I can hear him, Semper Vivi! I could hear that, and I think it would be good. And a guy that wants to be involved in wrestling, I think should reach out to me and use me in one of his songs. And pay me for it. I'll talk to Josh Bishop, the intense icon, who's actually signed to West Side Gun's fourth rope deal. Uh, I'll see what he can do. Is he now a Buffalo kid, too? Nah, he's still repping Cleveland, baby. Crown Jewel on Peacock. Seth Rollins, Bronson Reed. I'm taking Bronson Reed. What about you? Yeah, I think so. I think it's time he gets his big win. He's awesome. Randy Orton, Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens wins dastardly. Agreed. Roman Reigns and the Usos bloodline. What do you got? I think the I'm taking bloodline the bloodline 2.0. Oh. Bloodline I'm taking, and then Sami Zayn comes out and does something to help out at the end. Big pop. He's the going to be the other guy in the Survivor Series match. Women's tag team title, Fatal 4-Way, Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, Chelsea and Piper, Damage Control, Metaphor. Who you got? Chelsea and Piper for the upset. I got metaphor just as a way to keep them on the roster. L.A. Knight, Andrade, Carmelo. What, do you, what say you? Yeah. I think we're out of here. <laughs> I think we're out of here. Are we done? Are we done? We're out. Wrestling Observer Live. Bye.